Hi, my name is Tanya Thompson and I'm the founder of OfCourseOnline.com and Pilates Unlimited, The Art of Movement. One subject that I am incredibly passionate about is scapular stability. This is one subject that is really misunderstood. We can understand all of the theory in the manual. However, we need to know exactly what it looks like when it is done well versus when it actually compensates. When that happens, and the compensation is clear, we really need to understand why that compensation just happened. And that's in relation to the individual that's in front of you, their stress levels, their personality type, the amount of flexibility that they have. And all of this is going to contribute to how long it will actually take you to get that scapula stable. Scapular stability has been something that I've been working on for the past 15 years, and I can honestly tell you that this has become a tremendous passion because we've developed what is called the shoulder or scapular stability protocol. And we've had tremendous results by implementing this protocol on specific professional sports individuals, as well as the general population who is struggling with neck and shoulder issues. So I really want to show you good and bad scapular stability right now. So generally, when the normal population or even your professional sports people raise their arm, they always tend to keep that scapula very short into the sockets. They don't actually raise their arm by reaching the arms out of the socket. In other words, the movement is very short. When they actually lift the arm up, they really elevate into that levator scapula and upper trapezius. Now, the problem with this position is if the levator scapula and upper trapezius is active, it is the antagonist for the serratus anterior that actually wants to drop that scapula down and increase the range of flexion in the shoulder. Therefore, when your client is physically tight in the levator scapula and upper trapezius, they're going to struggle to find serratus anterior. Now, the knock-on effect of this is every single time they take something out of the cupboard, their brain brain will automatically take it out like this because they're not able to disassociate in the shoulder and just take something out of the cupboard with a light arm and a heavy blade. You'll also find when you do exercises with your clients where you're doing horizontal abduction, they actually end up shortening again retracting or adducting the scapula instead of creating that length in the socket where they can really bring that scapula out on the side of the rib cage. And when they're able to do this, they're going to create space and again, less tension. Remember, the muscles that are attached to the neck also have attachments to the scapula as well as to the thoracic spine. So muscles that are attached to the scapula come and attach to the thoracic thoracic spine, and muscles attached to the neck are also attached to the scapula. So that whole triangle is affected when we do movements like this. Then we often want to do rotator cuff exercises, and your clients actually start in this position, where we actually want them to completely relax their shoulders and have their arms and elbows free inside the socket. They struggle with that, and they start all tensed up. What we want them to be able to do is, as they laterally rotate, it's a free movement inside the socket. And you could then add a TheraBand so that they actually physically pull the TheraBand open, but they don't get that destabilization. Because if I now take my scapula in this position and I put it where it should have been, you'll see that my range of lateral rotation was actually less than I originally thought. So whenever we're doing rotator cuff exercises and we allow our clients to do this movement, we are not encouraging the serratus end anterior to maintain that scapula on the actual back. So when we're opening out, they're shortening in. Instead of creating that long movement like I'm doing with this arm now, when we laterally rotate, they're scrunching in. Instead of creating this free movement like I'm doing with my right arm now, 
when they raise their arms up, they actually elevate both sides and they restrict their range instead of doing it like I'm doing with my right arm now, where the movement is completely free. Another thing that we have noticed, and we've actually tested this with an EMG, is what is the effect of the PIC major on the serratus anterior to overact as a scapular stabilizer. Now, its attachment isn't specifically, or not at all, in the same area as the serratus anterior, but it does do that abduction, but it's literally that horizontal abduction, opposed to that scoop, which is the serratus anterior. So we've done EMG tests where we've had the EMG on the pec major and on the serratus anterior. And we went into movements such as front support and push-ups. Now, generally, people will say, lift right out of the shoulders over there, and now you've got your serratus anterior. Well, if you had an EMG on there, you'd see you'd have majority pec major, and you can actually get rid of that by going into slight thoracic extension and really scooping that blade underneath, getting that feeling of that palm scooping through the floor. From there, if you then had to go into a push-up, it would be a lot more serratus stability versus pec stability. Even in a sitting position, if you're asking your clients to flex their arm to the front, if they have to reach out of their socket like this, if I turned around now, you would actually see that the pec major is working. But if they had that feeling of extending the thoracic spine, making the arm light, and scooping the blade out, they would get more serratus activation and less compensation in the pec major. Now, these movements are vital when we're looking at shoulder health, because if there's one joint in the body that is operating every second of every day, it is our shoulders. When we're sitting, our hips are now not mobile anymore, but we're moving our arms, we're working on the PC. So this area is really compromised on a daily basis, not to mention the position we actually put our neck in. If you are really dedicated to encouraging health and longevity in your clients, then I would highly recommend that you look at our scapular stability programs. It's going to create amazing results. You're going to see what is good scapular stability. How can I achieve it on an individual who really doesn't understand it? And this is going to take that understanding for you to the next level. In fact, I would take this work that you you could learn from us and implement it on my own body. Because one thing I did realize is how do you teach scapular stability? You feel it yourself. We hope to see you soon. Take care.